Okay. And let me show you a couple of questions we ask. First is, a preschool points to uh, these things and ask Tina, if it is a rectangle, how should Tina respond? Do you want to hear what our teacher said? Yes. They really try to help Tina. Okay. Um, I'll just give you some uh, sample response. No, it is a square. No, rectangle has opposite sides. No, this is a square shaped like a box. All the sides are the same in a square. I show them a window or a door as examples of rectangles. Jennifer, what would you say? Well, <clears throat> I'd say that Tina's gotten a little bit of help, um, you know, uh, but we could probably do a little better. Um, what we're looking for in this question is a sense of precision about shape. Um, and what we're hoping we can hear teachers say is, uh, you know, well, what do you think and why? Those might be a good place to start. But then also to, to know that a square is a form of rectangle because the definition of a rectangle doesn't say whether two sides are longer than two other sides. Okay, that's not part of what the definition is. And it would be nice for our teachers to know that so that the brilliant child who looks at that and says, hey, I think that's a rectangle, even though it looks really different from that other rectangle that I saw over here, is met with you know, positive energy from the teacher, not a shutting down, nor a misdirection, nor confusion, okay? So I think in this case, uh, Tina needs a little bit more help. Okay, I hope you will be there. <laughs> and, okay, the second question here, um, um, we ask is about um, the base 10 value, okay? We said, you know, th here is the question. Um, but let me give you some of um, the sample response from a teacher. Um, one teacher said, you know, and what kind of activity you're going to um, um, tell Tina to, to help her to, um, for children to learn about this uh, particular important concept. Um, here is one, concrete, movable numbers Matching pictures, this, this is one idea. Another idea said, just look at the numbers. Another said, count number of students in the classroom and write it on the board. Another one said, count with the rhythm of music. Hmm. And last one said, here example. Teach them this when they get to the first grade. <laughs> <laughs> you are developmentally inappropriate. <laughs> well, in this case, I would say um, that there could be some good ideas in, in those strategies, but it probably depends on how they're implemented. And it depends on whether Tina really understands the base 10 system herself uh, not that she can use it, we can all use it, right? But who in the room thinks they can explain what we mean when we say the base 10 system? You know, Doug did some nice talking about that, and I think Jan, too, we kind of referred to it. Um, but there's a, it's the idea that there is a structure, and that our structure in our counting system is based on 10. And what that means is when you're writing the numerals and when you're saying them, when you get to 10, everything changes. Right, suddenly you use two digits to represent a single number when you reach 10, for example. So those are the kinds of things that are new information to the young child. You and I don't need to know it as we balance our checkbook. It doesn't have to spring to mind for us. But the early childhood teacher has to have that kind of understanding at her fingertips so that she can use movable numbers or counting the class and writing the number on the board in effective ways that help children begin to discover and see those patterns for themselves. Good, thank you. Um, <laughs> let, let's look at a third question. And the question we ask, ask a teacher to help Tina understand whether each of the following students made a pattern and why. Okay, and we give actually more than this, just three, but here's just sample here. And now I'm going to tell you what our teacher responds to this one, just pattern A, okay. 
Um, here is some students, the teacher's response. No, that's one. It did not make a pattern. I cannot find any repetition there. This student has the concept one, two, and three. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. And here's, here's why. Do, uh, I'm sure many of you see the pattern in the first bracelet. Can you describe it for me? Okay, I hear one small, one large, two small, two large, three small, three large. That's a great way to illustrate it, right? Very child friendly because you've got uh, then the auditory pattern going as well and they can hear how things are changing, right? This is a growing pattern. Okay, and it's not a far reach at all to assume that a child playing with the beads might come up with this and be systematically creating a growing pattern in which each step is one larger than the other. This pattern is the basis of our counting system. So wouldn't it be great if when a kid in playing with the beads comes up with it on her own. If her teacher could say, wow, that's an amazing pattern. Can you tell me about it? What's going on there? But the teacher who doesn't, doesn't, hasn't thought about growing patterns, hasn't thought about what, you know, what kind of pattern the counting system is, could very well miss this. Certainly in the chaos of an early childhood classroom, right? It, it, it's hard to pay attention to all of these details. But uh, it would be great if the teacher had a shot at seeing it and recognizing it and engaging the child and talking about it.